The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, I'm Steve for Botest.com and in this video, we're going to be conducting a sea trial and performance evaluation of the new and award-winning MCY70 from Monte Carlo Yachts. She's a customizable yacht that generates a strong desire for cruising and her lines are characteristic with a stylish design flair loaded with comfort features. Let's start by looking at her operational features. The lower helm has a compass atop the leather upholstered dash and in line with the wheel. The panel includes an autopilot, two 15-inch displays with an integrated monitoring system completely customizable so we can add, for example, any number of cameras desired. All opening port lights will send a signal here and we can control the entire climate system throughout the boat and, of course, the lighting. A tri-data display is next. Below are the windlass controls, engine start stops, the engine controls, and electrical switches. To the left are dual controls for each of the two Seakeeper stabilizers, the control for the displays that should be accessible from the seated position, the spotlight remote, trim tab controls, and the Zenta joystick linking the thrusters with the mains. Buttons on the front of the joystick allow us to select thrusters, steering, or a combination of both for full maneuverability around the dock. The steering wheel is mounted to a fixed base on a raised support with stylized plates beneath. And notice the ignitions. They're magnetic and when removed, clip right together. Visibility is through a 9 foot by 3 foot 5 inch single piece windshield with an 8 inch brow to knock down the glare. And defrosting vents are provided. The Celto helm seat is leather upholstered, custom embossed, includes a flip up bolster, flip foot rest, all on an adjustable pedestal on an elevated platform and the upholstery matches the theme of the helm. Just behind is a custom made divider repeating the styling we're seeing throughout the yacht and a watertight door leads to the starboard side deck. The flybridge helm consists of an autopilot, a 16 inch display, windlass controls, a second 16 inch display, a multi-data unit, twin engine displays to the outboard sides, a spotlight control, trim tab controller, the joystick, again connecting the thrusters with the main engines, the engine controls, engine start stops, a remote for the forward displays, and I'd like to see that accessible from the seated position. There's a separate switch for the nav lighting and a separate electrical switch panel. Way down below is a fusion stereo. The steering wheel is mounted to a fixed base with the compass just in line above. The helm seat is a fixed bench with a flip seat back for expanding the seating behind. A wraparound windscreen is supported by a stainless steel rail. As we make our way forward, there's a 14 inch midship cleat in the recessed bulwark. The ground tackle is in a raised platform for ease of use. It consists of a center mounted windlass leading to a through the stem roller. The foot control switch is just below. Access hatches to both sides lead to road lockers and storage. To starboard, there's also a fire hose and a coiled windlass remote. To the sides, 16 inch cleats lead to chafing gear behind and ahead of heavy duty stainless rollers. Warping winches and 14 inch cleats are to both sides of the aft deck and these lead out to heavy duty stainless rollers. A foot switch is at deck level. Dual 30 amp shore cords are under the port steps at the platform. At the companionway leading below, there are the vessel's main electrical panels, AC to one side, DC to the other. We'll access the engine room from a watertight door in the transom. Just inside the lazarette area, there's a combo washer dryer to port and the reboarding ladder with the water maker to starboard. That reboarding ladder attaches to sockets in the platform trailing edge. Behind and under the ladder, we can see the steering gear. As for the engine room itself, it's quite spacious with a headroom of 6 feet 2 inches and a full 20 inches of space between the rails surrounding the 1200 horsepower man V8s. The exhaust risers are well supported but we'd like to see them wrapped with insulation. Steel deck plates are easily removed for accessing components underneath. To the forward bulkhead we can see all the electrical switch panels. To port, the hydraulics for the platform and passerelle and the water system expansion tank are just over the first of two 11kW generators. Raycor fuel filters are just ahead. To starboard, the air handling system is over the second 11kW gen set. There are two Seakeeper gyro stabilizers, one behind each engine. Above are the engine room control panels for each engine with vents just above those. At the forward bulkhead is a watertight door leading to the crew space. This is the only entrance to the crew space on this version, but 
A closet in the saloon can be optioned out for an additional crew entrance at the port side deck. This space includes a pair of over-under berths at right angles to one another with an opening port and plenty of storage. A 19-inch TV is at the upper berth. There's a wet head with a corner-mounted vanity. The Monte Carlo Yacht 70 has a length overall of 69 feet 2 inches, a beam of 17 feet 10 inches, and a draft of 5 feet 8 inches. With an empty weight of 88,320 pounds, 50% fuel, 50% water, and 6 people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 93,492 pounds. With the twin 1200 horsepower man V8s turning D884 bladed props and run up to 2350 RPM, we reached our top speed of 25.9 knots. That produced an efficiency of 0.2 nautical miles per gallon that stayed consistent right on down to 1756 RPM and 16.6 knots. At that speed, the 67.5 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into a range of 233.8 nautical miles. If range is the goal, drop her down further to 1008 RPM and 9.4 knots. There, the 11.5 gallon per hour fuel burn results in 0.8 nautical miles per gallon and 776 nautical miles. All this, of course, while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 1,056 gallon total fuel capacity. She handles quite well with the solid feel of a cruising yacht that she is. Nothing happens fast, so comfort is assured through all maneuvers. We had flat comp test conditions, so we can't comment on her weather handling. At the dock, she's exceedingly well mannered, with the joystick being dialed in perfectly to all inputs. This is a well thought out boat for entertaining. So much so that right after launch, she won the Most Achieved Yacht Award. Make sure you see our features video to find out why. For now though, this is my full sea trial and performance evaluation of the new MCY70 from Monte Carlo Yachts. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.